Hey everybody, today I'm going over tags for all the plants that are coming in this week. So I've got quite a pile in front of me. And as I'm going through these, I'm reminded how important tags can be to helping us in our garden, but also I'm reminded of some of the pitfalls and problems that we have with tags. So a lot of times they could be either confusing, misleading, and some of them are just downright wrong. And so I wanted to give you some tips on how to read the tags and basically some of the biggest problems that end up happening with tags. And hopefully that'll help you as you're reading tags and picking out plants, you'll know what to look for as far as those red flags uh, so that when you're picking your plants, you'll be able to pick the best plant for yourself. So I'm gonna start right with the name of the plant and my biggest pet peeve are when we have tags where you can't read the name. Drives me absolutely crazy and these two tags are particularly bad. Sometimes it's because of the font, sometimes it's just the font size. But I have a tip for you where the designers might go wrong on the front, usually on the back of the tag, the information is much more straightforward. And a lot of times they repeat the information that's on the front on the back. So you can kind of get away with it. This one even has the name of the plant and the size and all that detail on the back. So when in doubt, check the back of the card. When it comes to plant names on tags, there's generally some consistency among the different tag makers, but every once in a while you come across a tag that might be like this one where it only has the common name. So this is, uh, the common name is Silver Nickel Vine. Now it's also got another common name, which is Silver Falls, and then it can also be called Dichondra. So you could go in and ask for any one of those three things and someone may or may not know or be familiar with those different names. Now, one of the other problems is if you went in and asked specifically for Dichondra, they could give you, like there's one called Green Falls, but then there's Silver Falls. So it, it gets a little confusing uh, when they don't include, say, a botanical name or a horticultural name uh, on there. It's also possible to come across plants from the same variety that have two very different tags. So this one here is kind of more of a branded tag for Super Cal Petcoas. This is kind of more of a generic kind of tag. Now, fortunately, in this case, the information on them are exactly the same. That's not always the case because different tag makers sometimes get their information from different sources. And that can be really frustrating when one tag says a plant grows to one size and another tag says it's something else. But just know that you are dealing with the same plant. Uh, they probably just came from a different grower or it's provided from a different source. Color can be something that can really trip you up on tags. Now, I can be talking about photo, but I'm also talking about words. So I'm gonna start with photos. As a general rule, don't trust the photos on any of the tags. It's very difficult for tag manufacturers to get an accurate kind of color correct image on these tags. They're just, they're on kind of an unusual material and that's just not a priority. So I'm gonna give you a, a really good example. See these two tags? Which one do you think is dark red? it's not the dark one. And actually neither the red nor the dark red are this color at all. So this is just a really good example of how uh, the print quality just, it isn't accurate, especially when you're dealing with reds. Those are kind of the biggest offenders when it comes to color. When I'm trying to get a general idea of what color a plant really is, a lot of times I'll go on my phone or on my computer and I'll just do a quick search for that plant uh, in a search engine. Then I just go to the images tab and then it brings up a whole bunch of photos of that plant. Now, again, our devices, their screens aren't really great at giving us color correctness either, but when I see that whole range of different photos, it usually gives me a pretty good idea of what those uh, colors are gonna be like. Uh, and a lot of times you'll have like photos from growers, which tend to be pretty good. And then you also have like snapshots from people's gardens or from trial gardens. And those can really help when you see those two in action. Now, there are some growers, especially small growers like on Etsy and stuff who put photos up there that they have really manipulated. And if there's really high saturation or kind of uh, almost surreal looking photos, it probably means that it was doctored up. Just bypass those, those aren't real colors on those. When it comes to tags and the words that they use to talk about color, things can really go haywire. And that's because the horticultural world sometimes describes things with different colors than I'd say the normal world or the rest of us. And that's especially true with like the colors blue and purple. So horticultural blue is generally purple. So anytime you see blue, don't picture, you know, red, white, and blue, navy blue, you gotta picture purple. Uh, and then go and confirm uh, when you look a little further. Uh, if they say purple, however, they usually mean more of a magenta. So this confuses people all the time. I want 24 purple wave petunias. And then they get them and they go, these are hot pink. And it's like, nope, that's a purple wave. If you wanted the purple 
purple wave, you have to get the blue wave. It's very confusing, and some of the plant companies have kind of bypassed that altogether. Like, for example, uh, there's a petunia from Proven Winners. They don't use the word blue, they don't use the word purple, they just call it royal velvet. Red is another one. There are just so many different ways that they describe red. So there's like cherry red, crimson, scarlet, wine, cerise, vermilion, carmine, ruby. The list goes on and on. And sometimes the way they use those colors, they really don't go in line with what I think of colors being. I don't think everybody grew up with the same box of crayons that I did because uh, sometimes they're really way out there. There are certain categories that may appear on a tag that you need to watch out for. So one of those is perennial. Uh, perennial really depends on your zone. So a lot of times there'll be a plant that we get in that it'll say perennial across the front, but it's go, you know perennial zone six through 10 or something like that. Well, that plant really is not a perennial here. So we have to be really careful uh, in that situation. So always look at the zone information and know what zone you're in because you may be in a zone six and it will be perennial for you, uh, but it won't be for me. So that's an important one. Another one would be native. A lot of people mistake the word native for meaning that it's a local plant. And that's not always the case. Usually native means native to North America. So it wasn't brought over from Asia or Europe or Africa or anything like that. It was here before those plants started coming in from uh, human uh, movement. Light conditions are another area that can be a little confusing. Sometimes tags only have like the little sun, the little shade sun, and then the little half and half. And that's not necessarily a real accurate way to be able to determine how much light something needs. So just a refresher, Full sun generally means it needs six or more hours of full sun every day. Now those hours can be broken up a little bit during the day, uh, but in general they want six hours. Usually they'll do even better if they have more. Now full shade usually means it likes three hours or less of sun. And now don't mistake the word shade though for full darkness because they still need that little bit of sunlight. Uh, they just don't need very much of it. And then in between there, there's two classifications, part sun and part shade. Both of those need between three and six hours of sun every day, but part sun can take full hot afternoon sun and part shade can't take that hot afternoon sun. Now that information can vary a little bit based on your location. So people who are farther south where they really get intense heat and they don't get much protection from the sun, uh, those areas, a lot of times they have to kind of step down in the sunlight category. So what would be a, an easily a full sun plant for us, they can't keep in the full sun. It's just too sunny, too bright, too hot for that plant. So they have to step some of their plants down, not all of them. Meanwhile, we're pretty far north, so we have the benefit of sometimes being able to step up our plants or kind of bump them up one more level. So like a part sun plant, a lot of times can actually take full sun in our area. It's not true for every single plant, but you can kind of test them or push them a little, and then you just keep an eye on them. So if they're showing signs of scorch or stress, then you know, oh, I got to get it out of that full sun or whatever. But we can usually go up one level. Now that does not mean you can take a shade plant and move it into part sun or a part shade plant into full sun. Uh, that's pushing it too far, but we can usually get away with a little bit more uh, than they could maybe in some other areas. The other thing that can make me a little crazy is when tags give very specific information. For example, if they say water weekly, that one drives me a little crazy because the truth is you should water your plants when they need to be watered with the amount of water that they need. So you should not be watering your plants based on the calendar or based on a measuring cup. You need to kind of base it on what that plant needs. So when, you know, every once in a while I'll see a tag that says that, you know, water weekly or water twice a week or something like that. And the truth is when we get to the heat of the summer and it's, we have a really windy day there's a good chance that your plant is gonna dry out faster than it would another time. So doing it once a week, your plant could really suffer from that. So avoid those things that are really specific in that case. Now it'd be a different scenario if you had say a self-watering pot that says water weekly. That is more of a mechanical thing. Basically it knows that, you know, as long as you keep it full once a week, you're gonna be fine. So that's a different story. But when it comes to just your general watering, not, not something I'm really keen on following those kind of instructions. Same thing for plants that are really specific on flowering time. So if it says flowers early June, I'm kind of like, yeah, flowers early June in Southern Ohio, but up by us, it's not till the end of June that we see it. So that kind of specific information can be a little misleading as well. I prefer when a tag says something like, 
you know, blooms early spring or midsummer or late fall, because then that's something I can adjust based on my location and how my season plays out. Because spring for some people is February and spring for us hasn't even really arrived yet. The last thing I wanna cover is a bit of tag etiquette. And basically, as a rule of thumb, please don't take tags out of pots. And if you do, you should always have the pot in one hand and the tag in the other. They should never separate from you uh, because otherwise you're not gonna remember where to put it. And it is very rude to other customers. Uh, we see it all the time. People will kind of collect tags. Uh, and when we ask them about it, they'll oftentimes say like, oh, I'm just gonna go take these home and then decide what I want and come back tomorrow. And that really doesn't help that next customer who really does need a tag. Uh, and a lot of times people say, well, you all the other ones have tags, so it's fine. It's like. They all have tags now, but as they sell, when we get down to those last 10 plants, if 10 people have taken a tag, none of them will have a tag. And, that, and people don't want to buy plants without tags. So uh, I beg you, please, please, please don't, don't take tags. Use your phone instead. And that's really a good idea to get in the habit of taking pictures of the front and the back. Uh, it's going to be right there, you know, right where you want them. I have an album on my phone specifically for my tags. So I have the front and the back on there, and I can just go to my uh, little folder and when I open that up I can you know basically find my tags uh, the other thing is is a lot of our phones now have searches on them so you could actually put the word in so if you're looking for a petunia you could put the word petunia in and if the word petunia appears on that photo a lot of times it'll find it now they're not always good at finding it and it also depends on the clarity of your photo but that can be a really handy way to quickly get to the information uh, or to that specific photo of your tag so a couple more tips for you I was almost done editing this video and I thought of one more thing I want to tell you about and it has to do with the height and the width on plant tags. So height generally means how tall a plant grows. Now every once in a while you might see a plant tag that also has flower height and that's usually the case with a plant like corabels or something like that that's more of a mounding plant and then it sends up taller flower stems and the flower height is where those flower stems reach. So that's something that can be a little different. With, it's important to look at which words they're using. Are they using with? spread or spacing. So width and spread, I kind of use them interchangeably. That's how wide a plant's gonna grow. Spacing, however, is the recommended distance between plants. So if it says 10 to 15 inches, we'll say, uh, you're gonna want to give that plant basically 10 to 15 inches to grow. So if you're planting multiple ones together, basically you're measuring from the center of one plant to the center of the next plant. That's pretty much how it goes. So if you're planting petunias or whatever it might be, you're gonna go, you know, here and then 10 to 12 inches if that's how it measures. So I wanted to make sure that you notice that difference because sometimes there's tags that only use spread or width and then there's other tags that only use spacing. Uh, hope you found this useful. I got to get back to organizing these things. I got quite a pile. I really do have quite a pile. <laughs>